one of the things I love about the you know, European conference is the diversity of not only functions, but different regions and countries that are involved. I think there was over 18 countries at this year's uh, IBF Business Forecasting Conference in, uh, for, in Amsterdam. One of the biggest differences to the US is language. So you all speak the same language. And in Europe, most people speak English, but not everybody. I've been hearing one number forecast now for the past 10 years. As I mentioned today, I think this is an obsolete uh, concept. You cannot disappoint a customer on e-commerce because straight away you're going to post something against you. If I go clothes shopping, if I go shopping for a new dress, I'll order it in three colours and two sizes and then get it, get it at home and try it on and send, send four and, send the four, yes. and sometimes send them all back. When you go to Germany, each single city is having its own speciality. Uh, when you go with this industry, it will be more cars for Stuttgart, for example, or Munich. Uh, Hamburg is known for uh, being the, the big logistics center. This has been a really great conference uh, in Amsterdam. One of the things that I think it keeps coming up at all these conferences is we keep talking about a one number forecast. I've been hearing one number forecast now for the past 10 years. There's a lot of different opinions on it. I have an opinion on it. I know you have an opinion on it. So I want to hear your opinion first. No. As I mentioned today, I think this is an obsolete uh, concept. We can still speak about uh, one set of number rather than one single number. Uh, at the same time, I think uh, there is a value in the SNIP of basically showing a few different numbers and having a discussion of the gap between them. What is the source of this gap? How can we close this? So you effectively welcome to look at one set of numbers, but never to one single number. What do you guys think? I mean, one number is one answer. Then you give some kind of a decision to the executive with your recommendation. Um, for us, this was somewhere the limit of um, our role, we, we feel we are doing a bit too much doing in giving just one number. I rather like more to share the extensive and holistic view of all the risks we are taking from having nothing done to something very extremely done. It's more complicated when you give to someone the choice and view on the risk they are taking rather than coming with a recommendation and one number. Um, I'm not saying that we don't do you know, scenario planning and don't identify risk. That's not what I'm saying with one number forecast, but we at least need to have a one number attitude, don't we? I prefer to think of it as lining up around one plan rather than one that, number, right? which might have a couple of different numbers underneath it. So not the range forecast and the risks. So my thought of it is once often is aligning up where you've got a promoted business commercial numbers with the supply chain numbers. We can do a great statistical forecast at SKU level, but when you start to try and layer on individual account numbers, that can get complicated and they want a different baseline. So actually, let them have their baseline and I'll take the uplifts and we'll pull it together. So we're all lining up around the same plan, but commercially for their revenue planning, they may have a slightly different number. So and I'm cool, with, and I'm cool with that. <laughs> You can tie the plans then. I mean, so we still have a one number attitude going on in the yeah. organization. I'm fighting for this one. Because yeah. I think when you have that one number, it's driving the rest of the organization. It, it drives the financials, it drives <clears throat> the operations, it drives marketing. So you're all operating off the same assumptions or plan. So you know, if I'm gonna add inventory because I have a different number, I know why I'm adding the inventory mm -hmm. and I made a decision mm -hmm. to do that. That goes back to, to be able to do that, I have a single number or attitude towards a plan. Yeah, the only thing I have trouble with is incorporating financial numbers into the supply chain number, if you, mm -hmm. want, if you like. So the risk is that you have a target and you start producing against a target rather than... But you're not producing against a target. You have a target, you're producing against an operational plan. You can still tie these two plans together. So there's still a bridge. And from a financial, if you're going to report mm -hmm. something to the street, I'm a, public, I'm a publicly traded company, we're reporting something to the street, yeah. that plan, I know we're going to be able to hit based on forecast, based on you know, capacity, based on what I'm going to be able to deliver, I know I can hit that. I may want to pre present something else to the street financially because of this, this, this. Once again, it's still a bridge to a one number. No, but then we agree. But then you, you, leave, it, you leave it separate, but you bridge it. 
Yes. But you have different... I can but go I think, with but, when, but when people talk traditionally about one number, they mean the one number that serves all of the parts oh, of the business. And you take the... And but that, the but that's actually what people... And they try to do. So I work with a large business recently, a pharmaceutical, where they really try and do that. And because, it's finan because it drives into the financial, we have a classic example of precisely wrong rather than roughly right, because mm -hmm. the finance guys yeah. are adjusting every uh, dollar and cent, which, isn't, uh, which creates a terribly complex process and doesn't add any value to actually getting the supply chain decisions right. This is the biggest problem with this uh, terminology of one number because um, people don't know what stands behind. So if you speak to finance, they believe it is a target. And all, mm -hmm. so it's just one number, that's yeah. it. Because in their mind, um, they have a target and there is nothing else. Uh, so each and every second number would be a second number. So then the only way to have it one, it's, it has to be exactly on the target. That's why it's not the uh, problem with the concept itself, but how it's being explained, how it's being understood, and then how it's being played. That's why I uh, prefer to call it one set of number or one plan. That's fine, but one yeah. number, it's like very dangerous. So, so I keep saying one number attitude, <coughs> yeah. but it could be one, one plan. plan. We can we can go with it. I mean, I, mean, I think we're in talking the right. same thing. Yeah. We're, we're a, bridging, yeah. coming to it. It's a little bit of semantics, we'll but it's just back in the old days when I was first talking about one number in the 90s, it really was one number. Yeah. So it was forecasting everything at account <coughs> level uh, so that it could then be cashed up and added up so that the, there was one number and so some of the traditionalists like me that make the distinction because when you say one number that's what I hear forecasting at account level so that you can have the right revenue for all the promotions priced up to cash it up to have one number one volume historically we've our field has worked on precision getting a number and you know as close as we could where accuracy is really about it's going to be in this range mm -hmm. and there's really a difference I think we need to start looking at that accuracy more so than the precision is what we and that comes to that range of numbers or multiple numbers is really the accuracy because we know we're not the precision point forecast isn't going to be right and when we operate a tire supply chain or or company off that point forecast it's going to cause problems mm -hmm. obviously they know it's wrong um, we we'll try to do it to be less wrong as possible and I mean you're fully right the range is uh, the important information and what gives the most educated decision uh, when you know which range of risk you are giving with your number if you, even if you want to give just one uh, it has to be coming along with a risk uh, the phase out of this meeting of a NOP meeting uh, is a decision and this decision has to be one number because this is triggering operation is triggering actions of people and then we are not guessing anymore of what can be the future, what are the possibilities. Uh, so this is a guidance, this is one number. But as an input, we need really to know the range and, uh, and the risk we take. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's part of, I haven't seen a lot of good SNOPs look, really incorporate that range well. I mean, the limited number that yeah. I've you know, worked with, mm -hmm. but they still come in and really talk about point. They have difficulty integrating range forecasting mm -hmm into an SNOP process. I mean, are you guys seeing? No, yeah, I think that is when you translate it to business. We try to go for, for a number, uh, for where we land more or less. Um, and on top of that, we see risk and opportunities that will materialize or not. 